Welcome into Starcade Media, everybody. I'm Noah Groniger. And if you haven't already, we want to make sure that you are subscribed to us here on YouTube. So take a second and hit that subscribe button below. Also hit the notification bell off to the side. That way you are alerted every time a new show drops here, the minute it hits our channel. What can you expect from us here at Starcade Media? Well, videos like this, as well as some great interviews. Just the other day, we had former Chargers pass rusher, lights out, Sean Merriman on. We got into the new Chiefs acquisition, Drew Tranquil, and that was really interesting because he's a former Charger. Sean Merriman knows him well, so you definitely want to hear that. We also talked about Patrick Mahomes, the Chiefs and Chargers, kind of that somewhat rivalry going on, how the Chargers can make it more of a rivalry. And we talked about the Lamar Jackson situation and what Sean has going on with his MMA brand, Lights Out Extreme Fighting. So that was a great conversation. We want to make sure that you guys head over there on our channel and catch that. We also go live during the season every Tuesday night at 6 p.m. Central with a show that we call Arrowhead Allies. That's kind of our flagship chief show. It's not just myself. It's the other co-founder of Starcade Media, Clint Schweitzer, and our guys, Brian B. Shiner from Hot 103 Jams, Shaggy Shane Williams from Shaggy Shane Entertainment, and our guy, the Money Badger, Michael Matthew from TGN The Good News out in sunny Hollywood, California. Also, guys, we want you to give this video a like. Also, comment down below. We love interacting with you. The likes, the comments, they help us, and we appreciate it so very much. So in this video, we're going to be ranking Chiefs general managers over the last 30 years. I mean, there's only been four of them, but there's been some good and some not so good. So I think at number four, you've got to start off with Scott Pioli. Yes, he drafted Eric Berry, Rodney Hudson, Justin Houston. He also drafted Tyson Jackson. He also drafted Jonathan Baldwin. He tried to make this Patriots Midwest by bringing over Mike Vrabel and Matt Castle. And he signed Matt Castle to a six-year, $63 million deal. How did he ever win Executive of the Year with the Patriots? I guess just because he had Tom Brady? Well, Matt Castle's no Tom Brady. And Scott Pioli, you are no Executive of the Year. That's why you're out of the league now, working for NFL Network here and there. And you were a tyrant. You were yelling at people about candy wrappers on the ground. You hired Romeo Cornell as head coach in 2012 when he had no business being a head coach. We all know what a disaster that season was, 2-14, and 14, the Javon Belcher situation, save our Chiefs. Yes, that led to Andy Reid, but that was a really tough season to get through. And Scott Pioli deserved to be fired and deserves to be out of the league. And number three, I think we're going to go with Carl Peterson here. He did bring in Marty Schottenheimer, who turned the franchise around from its lackluster days in the 80s. He did draft Derek Thomas and Neil Smith and Dale Carter and, I mean, Will Shields. I mean, he had some really good picks. He also brought in Glenn Dorsey and couldn't really find the quarterback. He was also known to get into fights with people in negotiations and really push their buttons to where John Tate stormed out when Carl Peterson was cursing in the negotiations and he traded Jaron Allen away. It ended up working out. We got Jamal Charles. That was a good draft pick, but people love Jared Allen. Uh, Carl Peterson was on the radio uh, at Applebee's where I was and saying, I promise you are going to get a deal worked out with Jared Allen looking at everybody promising them and then turns right around. And a few days later, Jared Allen is gone and traded away. Like I said, it ended up working out, but uh, King Carl's got to be number three at here. He's got the moniker King Carl. And, uh, you know, if a man thinks he's the king, that there's probably some ego there and some feelings that aren't going well. We just talked about John Tate. So he definitely deserves the three spot. At two, I think I've got to go with John Dorsey. The contracts, the salary cap, he just couldn't figure that part of the job out. The picking players, yes, he took Tano Passanio ahead of Alvin Kamara, and I was screaming to the high heavens to take Alvin Kamara. We did get Kareem Hunt, and while he was here, that worked out completely. I mean, a great running back out of Toledo. I didn't think that he was going to work. I watched the highlights, and he looked like he had good balance, and he could hurdle guys, and good power, good speed, could catch out of the backfield. Was that going to transition to the NFL? Yes, it absolutely did. Unfortunately, he lied to the owner and the people in the front office, and we all know the incident that he had, and his career has kind of spiraled down since then, backing up Nick Chubb, he's still a free agent right now. But John Dorsey did bring in 
Patrick Mahomes. I know everyone will say that's Brett Veach. I think that's a little overstated by Andy Reid and the Chiefs front office and media team because they got rid of John Dorsey. People are like, who's this Brett Veach guy? Why should we believe in him? So I think they overhyped his influence and role in saying that uh, he's the sole reason that Patrick Mahomes is here. John Dorsey was the GM. He had to make the phone call. He had to talk to the Bills. He had to work out a deal, and he had to move up and get the 10 spot and take Patrick Mahomes, and that was John Dorsey. So I give him a lot of credit in that as well. Not saying Brett Veach had no hand in it. I believe that he did watch the film and take it to Andy Reid, John Dorsey, and uh, the player personnel, and they looked it over. But John Dorsey had to make the move. He had to be the guy to call the shot and do it, as well as Andy Reid. But John Dorsey's the one on the phone making the deal. So I give John Dorsey tip of the cap for that one. I give him his flowers for that, uh, his role in that. Also, we drafted Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey, and Chris Jones. As great as Brett Veach has been, are we winning Super Bowls without Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, Tyreek Hill, or Chris Jones? We won one without Tyreek Hill, but we haven't won one without Chris Jones, Patrick Mahomes, and Travis Kelsey. So while I don't know if John Dorsey could have won a Super Bowl because he was not good at contracts and the salary cap was getting out of hand, I don't think Brett could have won without the generational talent that John Dorsey drafted here. So there's always going to be a little special place in my heart for John Dorsey. Number one, of course, it's Brett Veach. While he hasn't drafted the generational talents like John Dorsey did, he has hit on so many picks all the way down the line in the draft. The seventh rounders, a Jalen Watson and Isaiah Pacheco. I mean, we talk about Creed Humphrey, Nick Bolton, Trey Smith, uh, Legereus Sneed, Joshua Williams. He just hits, 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 and he's finally been hitting on some earlier round picks in the likes of George Karloftis and Trent McDuffie. So you got to tip your cap to Brett Veach. Well, he did draft Breland Speaks and McCole Hardman and Clyde Edwards Alaire. He's more than made up for it and replenished this roster and replenished the depth on this roster to allow those generational talents that John Dorsey drafted, complemented those well with the guys that he's drafted, and that vaulted us into three Super Bowl appearances and two Super Bowls so far. So Brett Veach has definitely got to be number one on this list. I'm rough on him with the wide receiver misses, what I feel like. Uh, you don't give him a lot of flack for Cornell Powell, but the McCole Hardman thing didn't work out, obviously. And Sky Moore, the jury's still out. It's only one year. Uh, he's more of a well-rounded receiver than McCole Hardman ever dreamed of being. So you'd like to think that he can take the next step and be that guy, but it's remained to be seen. I wanted George Pickens uh, ahead of Sky Moore. And back in the McCole Hardman draft, I wanted DK Metcalf ahead of McCole Hardman. So those are two things I'm harsh on Brett for, but you can't be harsh on him. He's, like I said, he's just hit on almost every single pick throughout the rounds. And so you got to tip your cap to him. Tip your cap to Brett Veach and John Dorsey to leading us to these Super Bowls. And Carl Peterson had a nice little run, uh, one of the winningest teams of the 90s. Uh, a lot of that um, I give credit to Marty Schottenheimer, but uh, Carl Peterson did have some nice drafts. Scott Pioli did nothing here. He was useless, a waste. It was a bad era of Chiefs football from Herm Edwards to Todd Haley, who I kind of like, and we'll get into coaches in another video. Uh, and then Romeo Cornell was an epic disaster and he had to go. So those are our rankings of the four Chiefs general managers over the last 30 years. Did I get it right? Did I get it wrong? Was I too mean to Brett Veach? Was I too nice to John Dorsey? Should I have been harder on Carl Peterson? Does somebody out there like Scott Pioli? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you all for watching. And until next time, go Chiefs!